Okay, everyone, welcome. Thanks for being here. We're going to go ahead and get started um, in this free workshop. Today, we're going to talk about adaptive content delivery and how gamification can be used with that to help boost engagement, uh, retention, and participation in your learning and development program. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. And you can also catch any of our past webinars, FYI, in our archives on our website as well. Uh, we also have a blog there and a host of other resources for you to check out if you're interested. But we're going to go ahead and get started. People can filter in as, as they need to. And so here's our agenda. And hopefully by the end of today's webinar, you'll have maybe some practical applications that use gamification um, that addresses more engagement and boosts more intention and retention, uh, and discuss how adaptive content delivery and learning might be something you can consider for your business objectives. Uh, we will be playing some games throughout the session so you can experience what gamification can look like. And we should be around 30 minutes um, with some time at the end for Q&A. So on that note, um, like I said earlier, if you'd like to join the chat at any time, please feel free. If you have questions, I will try to address those as we go. Um, but I would like to start a little dialogue on that. Um, as just kind of a, but first we're gonna do kind of a little activity here, right? Icebreakers, I know. But um, tell us which city you're in without telling us which city you're in. So I'll go first. Um, here are some visual cues for me. You can certainly unmute your mic at some point and, um, you know, give verbal cues or if you want to add an image into the chat, feel free. Um, but here's mine. So in, in my city, we have the famous cherry and spoon sculpture at the Walker Art Center. Uh, we have the beautiful mini Ha Ha Falls. Uh, and we have the Stony Arch Bridge going into downtown. Which city am I? Feel free to unmute yourself for this little activity or throw it in the chat. Minneapolis. Hey, there we are. Hey, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I cheated. Uh, I live here. <laughs> well, that, that might happen. <laughs> Minneapolis is right. Thank you. Um, and if anyone else is brave who wants to go next, if you're in a different city or the same one, um, feel free. Go ahead and unmute yourself and give us some verbal cues or throw something in the chat if you'd like. <coughs> Two clues, slot machines and buffets. Mm. Anybody else want to guess? Vegas. guess? <laughs> that was my guess. You got it. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody else want to go? Ooh, Wayne Gretzky, when we first began. Oh, I need to brush up my hockey knowledge. Anyone else know this one? Can I just say Canada, or do I have to be more specific? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't even think that's right. It is right. It's Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> nice. I got the country. <laughs> okay. Donna says cactus and desert views just hit 100 yesterday. Arizona. Oof. <laughs> that's got to be Arizona, right? Tucson, Arizona. Very nice. All right. Tammy, largest city in South Dakota. Boy, I don't, I don't think I even know what that is. Sioux Falls? That is right. Yep. Nice. <laughs> okay, and let's do one more. Holly in the mountains and stars on the streets. Ooh, cryptic. I like it. Any, any takers for that one? Hollywood? That's a good guess. Yep, that makes sense. Yes, that was Los Angeles. Correct. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for participating, everyone. 
just a quick icebreaker, just to, you know, get people uh, shaking off their morning routine here just a bit so we can dive right in. So thanks for joining in. Uh, friendly request to mute your mics again uh, as we proceed, just to minimize any background noise, just in case. But we will have some more interactivity in just a few minutes. So um, here are some terms to know, since not everyone is always familiar with exactly what gamification is or or some of the things we'll be talking about in our short time together today. So in the context of serious learning, we're talking about using gamification as an engagement tool for your training or your teaching, and there are different ways for how you can use that. Um, you know, very simply in a classroom, in a webinar like today, or a self-paced learning with mini modules or through your own LMS even. So we'll dive more deeply into exactly what we're referring to here with adaptive content delivery and learning. Um, but first, I would like to start a little dialogue in the chat, and uh, you can feel free to continue with comments throughout the session. We won't spend a lot of time here, but just to kind of quickly, you know, maybe gauge yourself and, and others, what are your challenges with training right now, or what area do you most want to improve or work on? Maybe you're returning to in-person training um, and finding some new challenges there. Uh, whatever it might be, please go ahead and feel free to add your comments in the chat if you'd like. Start a little dialogue. At the very least, maybe you'll feel like you're not alone. Um, and like I said, there will be time for questions um, at the end of the webinar if you have any, but feel free to ask them throughout. Training participation, yep, engagement, relationship building. That's really hard virtually, for sure. Wanted to see how we can use these programs. Cool. More effectively. Yeah, shout outs to people who are current users. Thank you. If you have additional comments and insights, please feel free to add them. Getting more blended learning and gamification into our compliance courses. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Training external vendors representing our company brand. Yep. Learning retention and application. Cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks. We're, we'll be hopefully addressing a lot of those things uh, today. So let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for sharing. So what exactly is adaptive content delivery? And, you know, just a quick little reminder, maybe keep your, your uh, goals or your thoughts that you just shared in mind as we go through our session today and see if anything clicks. And if nothing does, that's fine. But if it does, you know, great. Um, on that note, what we mean by adaptive learning, by definition, is uh, adaptive content delivery concept exists both in learning and in marketing. And it's the idea to deliver content that can be consumed across multiple channels and technologies and is personalized to the learner or the consumer. In the context of serious learning, we're considering how to make a training program, a comprehensive experience that goes beyond the robotic responses to mandatory learning, like compliance, and invites the learner to own their own learning process. So the adaptive content addresses the role of meeting the student's need for that learning, and gamification addresses the role of increasing the engagement inside the adaptive learning. This does require some creative thinking around what, how, when this learning takes place and becomes part of a hybrid learning system. And the goal is to create content that is user-centered and encourages participation that is also responsive to the individual learner. Sounds super simple, right? <laughs> uh, adaptive learning and training seeks to enable each learner to gain demonstrable proficiency as effectively as possible and efficiently as possible and they can access this training across different technologies and devices. That's kind of the key thing. This makes their learning highly mobile and on the go and just in time. And this can dramatically reduce the cost that is associated with traditional classroom learning by cutting out some of those materials, those meeting spaces, those paid meals, etc. And this is not to replace in-person learning but to supplement it with more opportunities for the student to choose and navigate. Many companies now use uh, LMS 
learning management systems to deliver assigned learning modules as a self-paced option in part of a training program. This practice becomes pretty sustainable when it leverages multiple different tools to deploy the content that can be scheduled and automized. So, however, the content itself can be designed to respond to the learning needs of the student and provide feedback in more teachable moments. This creates a rewarding feedback loop that encourages the learner to continue their own learning and development in a holistic and comprehensive manner. When used in a progressive format, the learner also receives the benefit of training that is unique and personalized and can start applying their new skills right away. So let's discuss exactly how this can work with adaptive learning and content delivery, and then we'll play a quick game. So you can use the science of learning with the tools you already have and start now. When you can employ these best practices with gamification and interactivity, you're halfway there. So this may look like using all kinds of different media formats, as well as building content that can be accessed at any time from anywhere in an asynchronous or self-paced way. And that means being very intentional with how you design that content and include room for spaced repetition in a fun way. And in the next few slides, we'll talk about microlearning and how to apply that as well. And since this is delivered online, normally, or most often, or through digital learning, the priority is to make sure that this is just as engaging as in-person learning with breaks for interaction and participation. And yes, online learning can be just as engaging as face-to-face -face learning. And the result of this adaptive approach could be increased retention uh, and improved confidence from the employee because they will now own their learning experience. They'll have access to quickly upskill when and where they feel the need to. They will also have the opportunity to apply their new skills and test their knowledge through assessments at their own pace that are still fun. And this can have a large impact on your business performance and outcomes and the analytics involved through the tools are an easy and observable way to show the ROI in time and resources. In this way, both you and the learner, you as an instructor, are receiving actionable insights into better achievement for the learner and for the organization. So we're going to now play a quick game and we're going to revisit what we just discussed. And I hope it serves as an example of how to interrupt a lecture, you know, if you're using a PowerPoint like I am today, um, interrupt that lecture with slides and introduce an interactive element. So we're going to go ahead and play, and I'm just going to go ahead and click right here. And that is going to open up my screen. And here we are. So we're going to play Catapult. For my current users, you're probably familiar with this one. Um, and we have two teams. So I am going to randomly assign you into even amount of teams. And there's two ways for you to get into this game. very well with the music playing yep I, I just muted it thanks <laughs> okay thank you um, the goal is to uh, get the most answers answers correct so you can choose a weapon to launch at the other team's castle so you have two options of getting in you can take out your phone and open your camera app and just scan that QR code and get in that way or if you'd rather play on your computer, you can go ahead and copy and paste this link on the bottom of the screen, stick that in a browser, and when it asks for a four digit code, you're gonna use this ID code right down here, 0016. And we'll just give a pause here to allow people to get in. If you have any questions, let me know. You don't have to play the game, but it's kind of fun to, you know, experience it if you if you haven't.
And then at any point, once we start this session and uh, you still want to join, you can do so on the bottom with that link. This QR code goes away forever, um, but if you do still want to play, you can do so. So we're going to go ahead and get started for the sake of time. And here's our screen. And I, I have muted um, the sound for, for today's webinar, but there is a bunch of things happening in the background. There's just a few questions to address. Um, and we're using this again as a quick little revisit of everything we just talked about. So we're doing kind of a, a spatial repetition. So true or false? The goal of adaptive content delivery and learning is to create content that is user-centered and encourages participation that is also responsive to the learner. And I am watching this little bar right over here, this blue progress bar. It's letting me know um, the percent of people who have had a chance to respond. And so as an instructor, I'm just keeping my eye on that. There is a timer, however, so if it times out, there we go. Thank you. 92% of you think that's true. Fantastic. That is correct. All right, Team Blue. And they take the score by the aggregate of the most correct answers per team. And because there's a timer on, the quicker you answer, the more points you get. So now you get to choose your attack. And as a team, you're choosing whichever one you want to uh, launch at the other castle there. And then it will take the most out of those. Okay, so it looks like, perfect, we got a fireball coming, yeah. There we go. Sound again is muted, but you get the idea. Okay, next question. Timer is on. What is gamification as it was defined? You'll notice you are seeing some of the um, answers coming in live. That's an optional setting. You don't have to have that on there. Three, two, one. And there's our timer. All right. And it is, in fact, C. That was the definition we gave. And then here's the PowerPoint slide that provided the definition. So this is a, an example of a, it's called a summary slide where you can add context or reinforce why something is correct or incorrect. Hope that wasn't a, ooh, tie. That's fun. Trick question or anything. Okay, we just have a couple of questions left for this little segment. According to ATD, organizations that focus on comprehensive training programs have higher income per employee than those that don't offer formalized training. True or false? All right, let's see how we did. Very good, 67% of you think that's true. Now as an instructor, I might be able to recognize this as a knowledge gap, right? So if I just went over this section and maybe, let's say this is more of a split and it's 50-50, I might be like, huh, okay, there's a knowledge gap we might need to revisit. So you get this immediate feedback, both the learner and the instructor. And then here again, this is the slide that we were showing that particular step. Okay, Team Blue again, choose your attack. So again, this is an example of, um, this game is not taking long. I have, I think, four questions total in this game. Um, and it's revisiting what we just went over because virtually we have to get people involved way more than you do in, in like face-to-face -face learning. Um, so this is a good way for people to interact. They're using their devices, um, they're getting interactive, they're applying their knowledge. So we'll go ahead and advance this. Okay, we're launching the rock. Okay, Team Blue is pulling ahead. Blue C3. So what are the possible benefits of using gamification with adaptive learning? Select all that apply. Mm. 
And you'll notice there are not um, live data points coming in on this one, just to shake it up a little bit. Okay, great. So this is a great example. Uh, most of us selected all, which is fantastic because that is correct. And then here's our dragon. I'm sorry, Team Red. There goes Bravo Zone. Okay. Now, with you know, with the audio, there's a lot of music and clapping and all of the things happening. Um, I can also click right on these tabs right up here, and I might get some quick ways to acknowledge people right away. You know, if if this was something where you are doing a progressive format, maybe or you know you have a winner or a gift card or something to hand out you have some information right away and then i can also click on this questions tab and get the most challenging questions for that particular session so this means this was the toughest question what is gamification as it was defined zero percent correct so i as an instructor now know however i delivered that was maybe not clear enough and i need to remediate i need to revisit that or add that to the next session. So you get some good informed information. So hey, thanks for participating. Uh, we will keep going. I'm just gonna pause and remind anyone if you do have questions, feel free to throw that in the chat. I will do my best to keep an eye on that while we're going. Okay, so micro learning and gamification. And this is just basically stating that gamification makes good business sense when we consider all of the proven benefits of meaningful gamified sessions that can also improve learning, retention, and application of knowledge, and overall motivation in organizations. So when we combine this with the concept of microlearning in an online or e-learning environment, we really leverage the capabilities of our program and it can still be very cost effective. When we talk about microlearning, we're talking about short and focused learning nuggets that fit naturally into your learning workflow and that are easy to consume and they repeat information for maximum retention for the learner. This helps to convert that knowledge from short-term to long-term memory and it really starts to impact skill development. So in psychology we call this consolidation of learning. And this approach also aligns with the 70-20-10 learning model which states that the majority of learning 70% is accomplished through hands-on participation where they can problem solve, apply their knowledge, and receive actionable feedback as they go. And it also asserts that 20% of learning is done through social knowledge, sharing, and peer interactions, which does include coaching and mentoring, and that only 10% of learning is a result of traditional and formal training. I know that's hard to hear. Um, so this is not to say that formal training is obsolete, but it does mean that adaptive learning is something that is necessary, especially for our modern learners that want options and that suit the way they interact with the world around them. So here are some quick tips and steps um, of how to blend microlearning and gamification together in the aim of adopting an adaptive content delivery system um, that can help create this immersive culture of learning. And according to the e-learning industry, there are seven steps to consider in this process. So focus on performance-based learning and performance improvement. Align your learning modules with your business goals and make sure each module helps learners meet a specific performance-based learning objective. Right? That's pretty obvious. Gamification works to make content engaging but we need to start with the right content to get the full effect. So this might include micro quizzes that unlock information to the next topic or module, or reflective activities that provide bonus points. Uh, step two, employ meaningful game mechanics with the design of form follows function. So this means you choose your micro learning format depending on the purpose it is intended for and not just arbitrary gamified elements. So this might look like an infographic or flowchart with a gamified element to process the steps of that chart or a micro quiz to reinforce learning of the last topic, like we kind of just did. 
Step three, include real and in-context scenarios that are relevant to their specific role and provide a quick and accessible way to absorb that information. So this might look like a set of microlearning units on safety training that floor workers can complete in two to three minutes tops in intervals while they are completing their tasks throughout their shift. Step four, deliver gamified, personalized, and adaptive microlearning based on their role, uh, knowledge level, department, and so on. So it makes it relevant. This helps identify knowledge gaps for both the instructor and the learner, and using that data to establish a baseline, and then using engaging ways to plug in the missing pieces. Step five, challenge learners to improve their performance by fueling their curiosity and desire to acquire knowledge, and to challenge themselves to beat their previous performance in this asynchronous process. So instead of competing against others, they are competing against themselves through intrinsic motivation. Step six, providing meaningful feedback is essential for effective learning, and also a reason that gamification and microlearning is so successful. There is a continuous feedback loop with the player and their game, which demonstrates their progress. And when used in a serious learning, we are also identifying those knowledge gaps in real time with the ability to remediate. So they can also be used as assessment tools as well. And then lastly, step seven, enhance retention of knowledge and help learners beat the forgetting curve with micro learning units that support the principle of incremental learning and the consolidation of knowledge. And another bonus with this is what comes with incremental learning is spaced retrieval, which is when learners are required to recall or apply the information that they have learned through interesting gamification, moving that information from short-term to long-term memory, which is really what knowledge retention is all about. And then just a quick note, speaking of analytics, one area that can be a challenge in virtual training especially is that real-time feedback. Um, so people want to know how they're doing. So that's part of the problem with virtual training. Uh, they want to know how they're doing, how they're performing, way, where they are on a leaderboard, etc. So because we like competition when it's offered in a healthy way, um, games can help us as the instructor, again, identify these knowledge gaps remediate in real time while people are having fun interacting with that content. Or it can talk with your LMS via SCORM files, so you can not only send out unique ways to teach and connect, but also get actionable feedback for more teachable moments. And then integrating games into your training is great for soft skill development, professional development, or general compliance or review content based on its ability to be participant-centered, of course. And it can also be situational, uh, scaled with scenario training. Because it's designed to be short and sweet, it can be easily accessed with devices such as phones, tablets, laptops, anywhere that people are. And it keeps them very mobile that way, flexible for on-demand learning. This allows your focus to be on performance games and quality content while using games to deliver your information to an informal and safe learning environment. And by turning your content into fun, engaging, and interactive sessions, you can pull all learning styles into the mix, even while talking about dry or dense concepts. All of this helps prompt positive changes in behavior, possibly, and possibly can improve your company culture. So, we are at the 30 minute mark. If you would like to stay on and play a, uh, another game as a general review, please do. I will go ahead and launch that. If you have to jump, because we're at 30 minutes, no worries, you can catch some things on our website as well. And there will be a follow-up email to this session with additional information for you. So, those of you who would like to stay on, great we'll go ahead and do our review game. Now this is Tally. This is uh, a presentation tool that we offer. I'm going to go ahead and slide on the anonymous mode. If you do have to jump, thank you so much for being 
uh, here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to answer this question. There are two, yes, there are tutorials on the website. Um, they're under the resources and support. If you want to check those out, feel free. Um, I can also send you the information for that as well. How many templates do you have currently? We have eight. Eight templates currently. Uh, probably be releasing another one this summer. Okay, great questions. Thank you for reminding me to check that. <laughs> Um, all right, so this is Tally. So again, I'm going to mute everything so we don't hear all the sounds. Um, but this is kind of like taking a PowerPoint presentation and then including Mentimeter, if you're familiar with that, um, and including the ability to poll, um, all kinds of things. So you're going to enter this the same way you did before. Optional ways to enter this review game. And I do have this on anonymous, so if, if you see yourself as student one on the screen, that's intentional. This is just a uh, demonstration of you know another setting that you, you can offer. In case people don't want their names on the screen or you don't want their names on the screen, I know that can be an issue sometimes. Okay, cool. We're going to go ahead and get started. Again, if you want to join at any time, go ahead and use that link on the bottom. And I am going to hide this leaderboard. This leaderboard will be going. So you're just going to click on that map using your phone or your laptop or your tablet, if it's clickable that way, um, where you are on the map. And hopefully, I'm sorry if you're outside of the US, I need to find a better map that includes that. <laughs> I know that. That sometimes does happen. Mute that sound. That's just our clicker. Wow, look at all of the people on the west. Very nice. There's like a nice little chunk of you in Southern California. And I'm way up here in Minnesota with Jan where it's 35 degrees. <laughs> um, so great, thank you for that. That's just kind of an example of using image maps in Tally. And here's, uh, as someone mentioned, one of our tutorials uh, that are posted on YouTube as well. And uh, we have just, I don't even know how many right now, but lots, lots of tutorials that you can access. They're two minutes long just to show you how quickly you can do this and to show you the multimedia options um, that you have in these templates. Okay, so also an example, this is just me importing my PowerPoint slide that I just use. So Tally invites us to get rid of a PowerPoint slide, basically. You can still put your slides of information in, but you also have interactive elements baked in with this uh, particular tool. And then here's a qu like just a, a screenshot of how to do this in our builder. So. Here's the different types of questions we can add right into our builder, including a polling, open-ended, image mapping, beyond our basic trivia style questions. And then this is how quickly you can add that PowerPoint slide. Just thing right there. Okay, so this is a poll. We're gonna kind of refresh the poll that we had earlier. What are you most curious about for your training this year now? So there's some options there. And then again, we have a setting where you can see everything coming in live. So this is basically our version of conducting a poll. And then once everything comes in, we have this cute little donut graph. Okay, so it looks like most of us want to use different presentation tools that are more interactive or that's the implicit reason. So yes, great. Hopefully this is <laughs> an example of that. Um, and how to apply micro learning, how to increase. Yeah, very good. Hopefully at the end of today, we, we get at least some ideas. And then just, you know, did your answer change or stay the same? And then again, if you want to visit our website, we have lots of information there um, to assist. Okay, so this is actually worth points. 
True or false, gamified microlearning is aligned to the 70-20-10 model of learning. Now, just like the last time, we have this timer going. This timer is optional, but if you've ever played Cahoots or something else, it's very similar. There's a timer involved. As the time goes on, the points, you know, go lower. They decrease in value. Okay, very good. 67 of us think that is true, and that is in fact true. Very good. And again, here's my summary slide where I'm extending that reinforcement, right? Um, this was just the PowerPoint slide that talked about that 70-20-10 model. So this is being used as a review, basically, um, but you could, you know, conceptually use this as, a, you know, your presentation tool where you're delivering your content as well. So either or. Um, so here's our bonus round. So this is an open-ended question, which means you'll have a field on your phone or your computer to actually type in your answer. And once you see the question, the person who types in the answer first correctly um, will win this round. So let's go ahead. Oh, let me answer a question. Does this work in Google? Yeah, I mean, so uh, this is all HTML5 output. Good question. This just means you have to have internet access. Um, this works on a browser of any kind. So as long as you have internet and your participants have internet, um, it's highly mobile. You can take it on the go, you can update on the go, you can train on the go. Yeah, good question, thank you. Okay, here's your bonus question, worth double the points. What does the 70% in the 70-20-10 learning model account for? mentioned it briefly. Maybe you already know. Challenging content, okay. Micro learning, okay. So this is um, an example of our open-ended where you're seeing these responses come up live, kind of like a little chat bubble. Retention, okay. Any other takers? Engaging content interactivity. Yes. Okay. So very good. Thank you for thank you for participating. Microlearning and retention, challenging content, those are all kind of components um, of the 70%. Retention might be the result of the 70%. And the 70% is talking specifically about how learners need to apply their knowledge, practice and apply it, um, and get feedback to really kind of um, consolidate and absorb everything. Otherwise, you know, that forgetting curve comes into place where we forget 80% of what we learned within 30 days. Super unfortunate. So, um, and you know, with dwindling attention spans, that's really kind of an issue. So hey, thank you for participating. Great job. So here's what we're talking about. Applying their new knowledge with real-time feedback for both the learner and the instructor. This is an example of one of our reporting functions in our particular platform, where um, as an instructor, you have access to some of this data, you know, some of these analytics that show where your students are at. You know, what question did they struggle with the most? How long did they take to answer a question? It's kind of a basic LMS function within our platform. But the goal is that gamification works with microlearning micro -learning units because um, of this real-time feedback. That's a big part of it. Okay, so we have just a few things left here. What is the best way to describe microlearning? Select all that apply. If you're on a phone, you might need to refresh your screen um, between 
Yeah, between questions. There we go. Okay. Perfect. I think we got it. We're going to keep going here. Um, but yes, it is all of them. The, it's, it's all of these structures are part of micro learning for sure. Great job. And then I just wanted to include um, kind of, you know, a couple of things that our clients say how they're using it. I think that's always helpful for people to maybe get a, a context of use. Um, so Renee America, they use it as an interval reinforcement tool. Uh, to reduce the forgetting curve. Uh, it helps create a fun expectation from our programs and people have fun while learning. Um, uh, Adam at S3, outstanding product, it's versatile and a service that is off the charts, thank you, but uh, let's talk to bottom, works like a dream. Providing essential trainings throughout the pandemic and allowed us to do things we never expected to need at the start of it. Really, I think that's been the experience for a lot of people is everything shifted <laughs> in 2020, right? Um, and really the the impact is lasting and we're continuing to realize that, oh, okay, we need to do things differently whether we're back in, in person or not because of the expectations of our learners, um, because of the way digital everything has really transformed how people consume information. So, um, yeah, so just kind of speaking to that, maybe some, we have more client stories on our website if you're interested in seeing some of those about how people actually use these. And then here's an infographic just to kind of I in summation what it is. So for our platform, you are plugging your content into our templates with all kinds of images, audio, multimedia, etc. You are conducting, uh, whether it's in person or in self-paced, uh, ways for them to be interactive with their knowledge, to apply their knowledge um, in a fun way. And then you're getting that feedback in real time. And then you're also being able to extend learning. We have the summary screens and preview screens around each question, which allows you to add a lot of content and context, right? Um, preview screen, introduce a concept maybe, show a quick video, and then your question happens, and then you have a summary screen. Very similar to how I was showing a PowerPoint slide, you know, uh, marking exactly where we talked about those things. So as a review tool, of course, um, that's super helpful. Just another video that we have um, in case you need some assistance. And then final question. It's a polling question. How confident do you feel to build something like this? No right or wrong answers. <laughs> if you say not very, that's totally fair. I will take okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and then one more tutorial, I guess, that I stuck in here. This is uh, one specifically on how to use the question editor in the Bravo Zone. So, like I said, many different tutorials available. And that's it. Thanks so much for participating. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and close this. And I'm going to just jump to my last slide here with contact information. So, if you have a session coming up and you want to see what this is all about, uh, we would be happy to get you started. We offer free demos if you want to, you know, try one for a couple of weeks. If you want just to, you know, get a tour and get more information, we're happy to do that as well. I have my contact information here. Our website is www.c3softworks.com. Let me type that into the chat here. If you have questions on anything or you just want to browse, go ahead and check that out. If you do have any questions that you want to throw into the chat or unmute yourself and have a chat, please feel free. I will hang out for a few minutes here just to see if anyone wants to chat. But otherwise, I will thank all of you, especially since we went <laughs> over our time. Hey, 
I hope you guys had fun and got some ideas at the very least. So if you have to run, I wish you a, a very pleasant day. Thanks for coming. Hi, Erin. My name is uh, Jennifer Cruz. I want to first thank you for your presentation. Yeah. It was lovely and fun and awesome. engaging. Awesome. Um, and I, I really like the idea of being able to create anonymous answers or have people um, answer anonymously rather. Right. Um, but from a training perspective, would you be able to see who's answering the question? So if you are in a classroom setting or have the ability to sidebar that maybe somebody or, you know, a helper, you know, can work with that person a little bit closer um, if they need a little, you know, additional, you know, help, personal help. Yeah, really good question. Um, yes. So the anonymous mode is just for when you're sharing the screen with them in a live session. Um, they still sign in somehow to the game, you know, with their email, with their name. Um, so you'll have access to those those reports in that data with their specific username or email or, or name, you know, first and last. You can actually also manipulate the fields of information that you require for them in, in our platform at least. Um, so that's separate from what's being shown on the screen. So yes, you would, okay, you would have great. all of that information, even per student, if you would like it. Okay, it's great. I figured that we would have access. I just wanted to double check. So thank yeah, you for no, answering. Really good question. Thanks for pointing that out because I don't think I mentioned anything about that. <laughs> well, thank you again. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Hi, Erin. I've used the application in a previous role. So I'm familiar with how to make different games, but in my current role, I'm more involved with onboarding and creating content related to human resources. Okay. Have you seen any use cases for your product and using that type of content? Mm, yeah, lots. So oh. I think it's great for onboarding, um, both as a presentation tool and certainly as a review tool. So really what we're talking about too with gamification is this idea that you can use quick you know quizzes and or games before a session during a session and after a session for that full retention so what that might look like is two days before you are having an you know live session whether that's a webinar or face-to-face -face, you might send out a quick little quiz or a game um, to get a knowledge check right for people to see where they're at maybe it's on your company manual or maybe it's on specific training that you're going over. Um, that creates kind of a, a baseline for them, right? And they get to know where they're at <laughs> with their knowledge, and so do you. Um, so that kind of in-person session might be more informed that way. Um, so what an in-person session might look like, I have a client who got really creative and not kind of outside the box and she used one of our templates called Quiz Show, which is basically our version of Jeopardy, um, which, you know, I think everyone in the training world is very familiar with that. Cool. So uh, she used it for an onboarding icebreaker and she filled up the board. You can have, you know, as little as nine questions or up to 25 questions on this template, depending on how many categories you want to create. Um, and what she did is she got information from each um, new hire ahead of time. So like two um, facts about their hobbies, their, you know, passions in life, etc. Maybe one picture of them doing one of them. And then she created clues all over the board with who they were. And so it was really kind of a connect the dots with her new hires through a game. Um, and I remember her telling me this later and I, and I just thought, wow, that's... <laughs> That's such a great creative way to use this beyond just a review tool, you know, or like a Friday trivia roundup. Great if you use it that way, but there's a lot of different applications as well. Um, so yeah, maybe you're using it to review kind of like we just did with the tally over, you know, the section that you just did before you break out for lunch. Um, and then we also have uh, templates that are specific for e-learning. So that might look like two days after your session, you send out a quick quiz uh, to see what they remember, right? 
and then you're kind of repeating and re reinforcing that information, but they're doing it in an interactive way. So yeah, uh, okay. I think a lot of my clients actually use it for onboarding, for hiring, for compliance training, for safety training, all kinds of repetitive type training um, because of the way you can make it interactive. And I think that's important when people are coming on, when you're onboarding people and they're getting an impression of, you know, the culture of your company and, and things like that, that's kind of, kind of important. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. I hope I answered it kind of. 